Welcome, Nuno. Thank you so much for coming. Lovely to see you again in that beautiful shirt. <laughs> Makes me happy to see colour. Um, so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what you guys like to invest in as regards fintech. So we focus mostly on the consumer space, so B2C, B2B2C. Um, and we also invest a little bit on what I would call software as a service and, and applications around the enterprise software space. To be honest, on the blockchain space, we actually look to the lower layer. So we look at infrastructure and platforms, uh, and we've actually made one investment in a blockchain custodian play. Oh, great. Fantastic. And so what do you see then at, in that great spot that you have as an investor as some of the current challenges for fintech companies? Well, I think there's a lot of fintech that's not really tech. It's a lot of financial services and arbitrage, you know, people playing with debit card interchanges yeah. and playing with all sorts of things that are really not tech per se. Yeah. And in that model, the issue is how do you actually create a moat? How do you avoid other people coming into the market? So that's one of the core issues that I'm seeing in the market. The second one is really... Uh, in particular, when you go to consumer, people go to consumer, they think about their tech, they think about their products, they think about their they think about it a little bit like a financial services company, but they forget they're actually a consumer company. Yeah. And acquiring customers and getting customers on board and getting them to adopt your services is a really complex issue, in particular in a very noisy environment. Yeah. It's very costly in financial services in general. Yeah. And so I'd say that's probably the second issue that I see the most uh, prevalent in the market right now. And so what's your personal vision of where we're going as regards the fintech um, domain? And obviously, if you guys invest in crypto and blockchain, you, you, you can enlarge on that. Maybe leaving blockchain and crypto for just for the, for the time being, I think just in the broad sense of what's happening in this space, it's actually very confusing what's happening. Um, you know, people talk about the bundling and unbundling of services that happens back and forth in specific sub-industries and industries. And the problem with financial services and fintech is there's unbundling and bundling happening at the same time. You have people that are trying to serve end consumers and customers with something that unifies all their visions and views on how they invest, spend, and, uh, and look at their money. Yeah. But at the same time, you have people that are totally unbundling it and saying, no, there's a corporate card. We focus on corporate cards or we're just focusing, for example, on a wellness service that comes from basically the usage of your services, et cetera, et cetera. So at the same time, I think it's actually a very noisy market. It's, there's a lot of complexity around what's happening. Um, but I'm very bullish about it. I think we are ready for very significant disruptions to some of the existing financial players. Um, and on the other hand, we have some financial players that are sort of adopting technologies and are trying to come into this and, and get the right angle of entry um, as, as a path to innovation for themselves. And how do you see the crypto blockchain affecting the fintech domain? I, I think there's been a lot of conversations around it. Um, Funnily enough, I think the financial services industry might be uh, probably one of the core adopters of blockchain technologies. And forgetting the crypto assets for a second, obviously there will be a lot of use for them, stable coins. There's been a lot of discussion recently around it. Um, we see some of the big proponents like Fidelity and others looking at this space and really you know, investing and, and spending time and putting money to deploy around blockchain. So I do think if we look at an industry that will likely adopt blockchain, this is clearly one of them. Um, we see also that there will be a lot of demands on infrastructure and platforms. That's why we actually, for example, made an investment in the blockchain custodian space, because yeah. clearly there's a need to have a custodian infrastructure, which today does not exist yeah. for the crypto world. Um, and so I think the, the opportunities are actually pretty immense in this space and sort of the crossroads of blockchain with, with financial services. Right. And um, the SEC's made a few moves in the past week that um, is um, terrifying a lot of people, I'd say, yes. um, with STOs, ICOs and IEOs. So um, what do you think about what's going to happen in that area? I think regulation was needed. Um, in some ways, I, I compare where, where we are at, in particular the A-Day of 2017 to maybe the late 2018 time which was very comparable to the far west of the internet yes. <laughs> in the mid 90s for those who sort of went through it. Yeah. And, and I think there was need for regulation. Someone needed to come in and right. say, you can't have 95% of the stuff that's just fraud. Yeah. And they're saying it's not securities, but it is, yes. et cetera, et cetera. I think in that there has been a little bit, you know, very clear, you know, positioning by the SEC on a couple of things. It's just issued also now views on airdrops and a couple of other things and guidance on what they mean. I think that's that's good because once there's clarity on the rules of the game, I think a lot of things get really, really um, clear.
clear to the overall environment. There will be some winners and losers out of these regulations for sure, so I have no doubt about that. But I think regulations in general are, are a positive means for this industry to become accepted and understood by, by the regular consumer, by investors actually even, yes. and by a few other participants in the market. I know I saw a lot of um, investors that I know who came and paid as attendees to a lot of my events in 2018, and I was amazed. I've never seen them actually pay and come to learn, so that was great. It's it's still a little bit the land of the blind in some ways, and I yes. think it's the land of the blind because if you look at what blockchain is doing, it is a technology first play. It's almost like the equivalent of a protocol. It's like you're putting TCP/IP together, yes. and you're saying this will solve some issue, and people yes. are like, why? Yes. Uh, and unless you're an engineer and you're deep into it, an engineer probably with some strong mathematical background, it's sometimes difficult to understand what it actually stands for. Yes. So it's one of those areas that I think will get will get simplified more and more through time, where there's going to be a lot of infrastructure and platforms that get created to simplify then what I would call sort of the app economy that will come later. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm bullish on it long term. I'm very bearish short term. So I spend time in the market. I look at a lot of companies, but I, I actually don't invest very actively. But I do think the long term is there um, to be taken. Great. Well, thanks again for coming, and I'm looking forward to the panel. Thank you. My pleasure.